Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape, brought to you by your Richfield gasoline dealer and the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York. Marketers of Richfield gasolines, motor oils, and other petroleum products. Look for the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Tonight, we escape to the Old West in the story of a boy who never owned anything but a gun. As Joel Mercutt tells it in his exciting tale, Sundown. The sun is kissing the top of the mountains, and in a minute the shadows will start to sneak along the street. It's sundown, and you can't do nothing to stop it. Everybody knows that. That's why the town looks like a ghost town. Not a horse nor a rider in sight, not even a tumbleweed. Oh, there's folks around, all right, looking out from door cracks and windows. And now the street ain't empty no more. Here's what they've been waiting for. There's Kirby Hunsaker coming out of the saloon at one end of the town, and there's Ben Ford coming from the liver stable at the other end. Both of them walking towards each other slow, right hands hanging like claws an inch from the gun holsters. In a minute, one of them will be dead. Kirby Hunsaker or Ben Ford? Little Ben. Nothing but a baby when I picked him up off of the desert 15 years ago. Hold up a minute, Sam. What is it? Over there, dried out hole, see you? Yeah, looks like a man. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a man right enough. Or what's left of him. Oh. He's come a long way for water. Comes the wrong place. Give me a hand with him. He alive? I don't know. Well, yeah, he's alive. Can't he? Here, friend. Swig this. You better hold it to him. Huh? Son's got his eyes. He's blind. Oh. Drink it. Drink just a little bit of it. Oh, it ain't gonna help him much. Burn clean through. Yeah. That better? Thanks. My wife and my kid. Yeah, yeah, where they at? Back, back there. Where I left the wagon. Animals died. I, I... Came for water. Better give me some more, Dan. No, he don't need it no more. All we can do is find his wife and kid, if there's anything left to find. There was something left. A sun-baked wagon in the midst of that hellish inferno, a dead woman and a kid. Five-year-old boy. His face is burned, his lips is cracked with fever, but his eyes stared out across that desert like they was following some nightmare that nobody else could see. He didn't cry, he didn't whimper, he didn't talk. We gave him water and he took it. There wasn't no place to send him. And he just stood there watching us as, as we buried his mother. Well, what do we do about him? A kid? Take him with us, I reckon. Ain't much else we can do. Well, ain't nobody on the ranch. Take care of him. No, ain't nobody here neither. He's like a little cactus, Sam. He'll grow or he'll die. He grew. Big, raw-boned kid. And by the time he was 12, he could handle a man's work. And I had a feeling for him, a feeling like he was, like he was my own. A feeling that could make me hurt when I looked at him. Dan? Yeah, Ben? Do I have any money? Well, yeah, I reckon you have. You work for your keep. How much do I have, Dan? 
Well, now, I don't know. It takes some figuring. But this is your home, boy. Everything that's here is yours. Do I... Do I have enough to buy a horse? Why, I reckon so. Then I want my own horse. Mm, I see. All right, boy. Take your pick. That three-year-old black with the star in his face. I want him. All right. You just bought yourself a horse. Yeah, he'd bought himself a horse, but it was more than that to him. It it meant he had something, something that was his, come flood or thunder, something in the world that belonged to him and not to nobody else. It gave him a reason for being alive, and he started to build his life around that black horse. No horse ever got to care like that. Ben had had the horse for almost a year when Kirby Hunsaker came. He rode in one afternoon while me and Sam was down to the corral. Ben was in town with a buckboard picking up supplies when Hunsaker rode in, just pounding leather. Well, Mike. Well. Howdy. Howdy. Your horse looks like he could use a rest, Ranger. Need shoeing. He'd be all right. I'll trade him and cash for a fresh horse. Ain't nobody gonna ride a horse of mine that way. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said I'm going to trade him. That means I'm going to trade him. My name's Kirby Hunziker. He said the name like it should mean something, and it did. Kirby Hunziker, a name that was drifting all over the West with a trail of blood behind it. Stagecoach drivers and travelers carried it on their tongues, and he knew it. He had a face like a woman and eyes like a steel trap, and there wasn't no glove on his right hand. It was brown and weathered from sun and wind and it hung close to his right side like a claw, never more than an inch from the butt of his gun. A gunfighter. If you're thinking it over, you're wasting my time. Better do it, Dan. All right, Hunziker. I'll take the black with a star on his face. Put a rope on him. I said put a rope on him. Not that one. He ain't mine. I ain't asking whose he is. Put a rope on him. Any other horse, any one you want, even Trey. Get that horse and keep your hand away from that gun. Dan, do what he says. You can give young Ben the Palomino. He's just a kid and a horse is a horse. He'll forget about it. No, no, he won't, Sam. He won't never forget it. Pronto, friend. Put a rope on that black pronto. There was nothing else to do. Hunsaker saddled Ben's horse and just lit out down the trail. Me and Sam just stood there. We were still standing there when Ben brought the buckboard back from town. I watched his eyes go to the corral like they always did, and then he turned and looked at me and Sam like like we was a firing squad. Where's my horse, Dan? I told him. His face was like stone, but there was a change in his eyes. They got back that same look they had the day I picked him up half dead on the desert, lost and robbed and helpless. You let him take my horse. Well, that Palomino's worth twice as much, boy. Not to me, Dan. The Palomino ain't mine. Yes, he is. Because I'm giving him to you. I don't want him. I want my own horse. Hey, simmer down, boy. You come back let here. Let him go, Sam. Let him go. He'll cool off. We might as well unload this here buck, boy. All right, I'll drive her on up the house. Get up there, boy. Hey, Ben. Ben, wait. Hey, that fool kid ain't even using a saddle. Now, crazy... He's going after Hunsaker. Hurry up, Sam. Saddle up. Hurry up. He was riding hard and light, and we was distance before we even got started. But we followed the cloud of dust that trailed after him. Then the sun down hit, and he was lost somewhere in the night. There ain't much chance to find him now, unless he stops and strikes fire. He won't stop. Yeah, be a moon pretty quick. Hey, wait. Listen. Yeah, it's a horse. Oh. Must be over at the edge of that ridge. Hey, let's take a look. Hey, it's a horse, all right. Looks like the roan the kid was riding. There's something else there, too. On the ground. We rode up. There was another horse on the ground. And in the light of the moon, I could see the white star on its black face. Ben was sitting on the ground beside it. A few feet away was the body of a man. I rolled it over face up. It was an Indian. There was a bullet hole in his head. What happened, Ben? I don't know. 
This is the way I found him. What's wrong with Darby? His leg's broken. Oh. Or I must have stepped in a chuck hole. Yeah, yeah. Then the Indian come by and Hunsker gave him a bullet in exchange for his horse. Huh? Tracks in the dirt there. Well, it's a good thing the boy didn't catch up with him. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's a bad break he's got there, boy. I know. Ain't nothing you can do for him. I know. Well, now, why don't you uh, just ride on back to the ranch of Sam? Yeah. I'll stay here for a while and, and catch up with you later. You don't have to do that. Lend me your gun. Oh, now, look, boy, let's ride off, you and me. No. He's my horse, Dan, and I've got the right to shoot him. Well, yeah, Ben, I reckon you have. Here's my gun. Come on, boy. I'm coming. Well, me and Sam will walk off a little ways, Ben. Give you a chance to just fall if you want to. Get it off of your chest. I'm ready to ride with you. I ain't gonna cry, Dan. <laughs> He didn't cry. He hadn't cried when I picked him up off of the desert, and he didn't cry then. But the tears was inside of him someplace where they couldn't get out. Never showed in his eyes, though. Something else showed there instead. It was hate. A hate like a pure white flame. I could see it burning there when we got back to the ranch that night. What'd you say his name was, Dan? Who, uh, who's that? Whose name? The man who took Star. Oh, uh, Hannigan, I think. Yeah, Jim Hannigan. That isn't what you said before, Dan. I want to know. Hunsaker. Kirby Hunsaker. You better go in and get some sleep, boy. Ben, you can have your pick of anything in the corral. I don't want another horse. Well, when you see something that you do want, you just holler at yours. That's promised. Anything, Dan? Anything. All right, then. I'll take your gun. My gun? You promised, Dan. I promised. Here. It's yours. Good night, Dan. Good night, Ben. Why, in all my days, I never heard it's such a lame brain thing. It's giving a kid like oh, that now, a gun. Oh, now, now, he'd have got one somewhere sooner or later. <laughs> And if I know him right, it best be soon. Oh, he's only a boy. Thirteen. You get to be a man fast in the next few years. And we can hope for him to get better sense. You're just wasting your hope, Sam. I'm turning mine the other way. I'm hoping that Kirby Hunsaker don't never come back here. Sometimes after years of scientific research, there comes a discovery that benefits everyone. Xylene is that kind of discovery. Xylene is a super gasoline component with one of the highest Antinoc ratings known to science. And today, Xylene benefits you whenever you use Richfield gasoline. Your car comes alive with new flashing power when you use Richfield gasoline with Xylene. For faster getaway in traffic, for new sustained power... For higher than ever Antinoc qualities, Richfield gasoline with Xylene is made to order. Get Richfield high octane at regular price for the average motor. Or Richfield ethyl. Ethyl at its best for finest results in the highest compression motors. Each Richfield gasoline contains Xylene. Each is a leader in its class. Tomorrow, get a tank full of Richfield gasoline with Xylene. Test it against the gasoline you're now using. Feel that Xylene zip. Stop where you see the Richfield Eagle and the cream and blue pumps for Richfield gasoline with Xylene. And now we return you to Escape. Oh, 
A boy and a gun. And they were together night and day. Ben kept it with him in his sleep, not under the pillow, but next to his cheek. And you could see the red marks of the barrel on the side of his face when he'd get up in the morning. The rest of the time, it was belted around him. And when he wasn't working, he'd go off alone into the hills for target practice. And the target he used was an express company reward poster for Kirby Hunsaker. After the shots were all hitting the target, hitting close and fast, he stopped firing and was off on something else, the draw. I'd catch him at it in the house or the barn, wherever he thought he was alone. He started to wear his belt different, too, with the gun holster tied low on his right hip and his right hand hung by his side like a claw. And it got more claw-like with the passing years. The rest of him had changed, too. He wasn't a boy no more. He was a man. We heard about Kirby Hunsaker more and more we heard about him. His name had gotten big since he took a kid's horse. Got to be one of the three names mentioned most when the talk in the saloons turned to gunslingers. Jim Dunn, Boaz Watson, and Kirby Hunsaker. Killers for hire for any dirty job outside of the law. But all jealous of each other, all bound to meet someday and find out who would be just a flick faster on the draw. And Ben had to be there the night a stray cowpuncher stopped in to rest his horse. More we'll coffee, stranger? Uh, thanks, sir. Reckon I will. I watered your horse. Sure needed it. You must have come a long way. Yeah, from Goldfield. Been riding lucky, though. I come through Flagstaff just in time to see the fight. What fight? You mean you ain't heard about it? Uh, it must have been riding faster than I thought. You ought to have seen it. Never was a gunfight like it. Who was in it? Uh, two of the best. Big Jim Dunn and Kirby Hunsaker. Ben grabbed the edge of the table and his face got as white as borax, like a lead bullet that hit him in the gut. Which one of them got it? I prayed for the right answer. The answer that would have been right for me, not the one that Ben wanted. Oh, Hunsaker beat him. Dunn never cleared his holster. Color come back into Ben's face, and that pure white flame I hate burned in his eyes again. Hunsaker got the draw on Big Jim Dunn? Oh, yeah. I wish I could have stayed in Flagstaff. Boaz Watson someplace in the territory, too, and as soon as he gets wind of it, he'll be on Hunsaker's trail for a showdown. Well, if Dunn never cleared his holster, then the man ain't born that can outdraw Hunsaker. Boaz Watson thinks he can. He's been itching for the chance. It's a chance he ain't gonna get. Ben. Ben, where are you going to? Just thought I'd take a little ride, Dan. Flagstaff? Flagstaff, Dan. And don't try to stop me. Trying to stop him would have been like trying to stop I avalanche, but he couldn't stop me from following, neither. He rode day and night, trading mounts on the way, and I was an hour behind him when he reached Flagstaff on the third morning of his ride and started his hunt. He tried the hotel, the express office, and one by one the saloons, asking the questions and seeing faces go blank. He was easy to find when I got to town. He left a trail of questions behind him, and I found him in the last saloon on the street. Still asking. Did you hear what I asked you, bartender? Yeah. Yeah, I heard. Well, how should I know? Does he ever come in here? Well, I, I just serve drinks. I don't watch who comes and goes. I'm tired of walking and I'm tired of talking. I want an answer. Well, I reckon he comes in sometimes. When? Usually about an hour from now. Good. I'll wait. Gonna buy me a drink, Ben? If that's what you came for, Dan. <sighs> Been rough trailing you, boy. Men and horses ain't meant to be pushed that hard. I was in a hurry. Well, maybe we can take it easier going back. Maybe if we left right now, we could camp out someplace tonight like we used to. Ask me later, Dan. This is something I gotta do first. He wouldn't drink, and he wouldn't leave. He just stood there waiting, looking at nothing. He might have been carved out of rock. There wasn't a nerve in him. And then I heard the door swing the way it had a couple of times before, only this time it was different. The talk around the table's cut out. The bartender's hands tightened around the glass he'd been wiping. Every head in the place turned towards the door. 
It was Kirby Hunsaker. I knew that face. It grown heavier and crueler, but I knew it. He stood there in the doorway while them bear trap eyes of his searched the room, moving first from gun belt to gun belt, flicking an extra beat on the ones that hung low, looking for the hands without gloves. Then his glance come up to face level, like a like a assayer examining ore. Well, him and Ben hadn't never seen each other before, but somehow they knew each other. Their eyes caught and held like two longhorns locked together. I hear somebody's looking for me. In case anybody don't know me, name's Kirby Hunsaker. I'm looking for you. Speak your piece. A long time ago, when I couldn't do anything about it, you stole a horse from me. You called me a horse thief? You ran him into a chuck hole and you left him with a broken leg. I had to shoot him. You got nerve. Name your price. I might pay it. You'll pay it. My price is the life of the man who stole that horse. You got a gun? Dig for it. You move first, Hunsaker. I'm giving you an edge. Better take it. No. I want to give you a little time, Hunsaker. If I draw first, then you got to move without thinking. But I want you to think. I want you to think and decide and worry. You're talking big. A little too big. I want to give you time. Like you gave it to a horse with a broken leg. Because you won't draw fast enough, Hunsaker. Not even if you move first. I'm going down to the livery stable to take a nap. At sundown, I'm coming back up the street and I don't want anybody on it. You better shoot me in the back while I'm going out that door, because if you don't, I'm going to kill you, Hunsaker. The flame was in Hunsaker's eyes, too. But it was a man's hate, not pure and white, but diluted with the memory of the way Ben's gun hung, and diluted with just a shadow of fear. Ben went back and slept, like he said. I sat beside him for the best part of an hour. And then I shucked him, mm. kind of gentle. Sun's hanging pretty low, Ben. Just about time to get up and wash. <sighs> Why don't you start for home, Dan? I'll catch up to you later. Well, I thought that I'd wait up at the hotel. All right, Dan. See you later. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll see you later. So here I am, in the window of the hotel, and yonder he is in the street, him and Kirby Hunsaker, walking towards each other. And the town is so quiet you can hear their steps on the boardwalk. fingers of the right hands is clawed like hooks, almost touching the gun butts. Don't even seem like the sun is moving anymore, like even the shadows is glued there on the ground waiting for one of them hands to move. Because when it comes, it'll come fast. Better dig, Hunsaker. You punk. I'm going to collect for that horse. Dirty fellow. <laughs> That's your receipt, Hunsaker. Ben! Ben! Ben, are you all right, boy? I'm all right. Let's walk. Well, well it's, oh, it's all over now, boy. Let's saddle up and go on hey. home. It's a blacksmith. Guess the horses are ready. Express rider came in just after you left before. Boys, Watson is riding in. He met him on the trail. You gonna stay and meet him? Me? I got no quarrel with Boaz Watson. Well, looks like you will have. He was mighty keen on meeting up with Hunsaker. Looks like you've taken over Hunsaker's place. You'd better go on alone, Dan. 
place. What do you mean, Ben? I killed Hunsker. Now every gunslinger looking for a reputation will try to get it by killing me. From now on, I gotta fight or run. Well, I'll, I'll stay with you. I, I've been holed up in one place too long anyhow. No, I'd Dan. Like... Uh, this is where we gotta split. Right now. Thanks for everything. I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Dan. Goodbye, Ben. Goodbye, boy. Goodbye, son. Yeah, yeah, he's a gunfighter now. The gunslinging madman will see to that. But he won't never be an outlaw like Kirby Hunsaker or Boaz Watson or Jim Dunn. He kill if they force him to it. But ain't nobody never gonna buy his gun for killing. Cause he's got to own something. Desert took his family. I couldn't make up for him. Kirby Hunsaker took his horse. And he'll never really own another one. But there's one thing he's got in this world. That gun. That gun is his. He owns it. No one wants to have car trouble, especially on a vacation trip. But sometimes we forget that faulty or neglected lubrication can cause wear and breakdown in any car. To keep trouble away, see the Richfield Gasoline Dealer tomorrow. Get All Point protection against summer wear and breakdown with Richfield All Point Safety Service. This service gives your car the extra protection of new Rich Lube Lithium Lubricant, the premium lubricant that's better always. And Richfield All Point Safety Service also includes all point lubrication of your chassis, transmission, differential, and wheel bearings. And to protect your motor in hot summer driving, the Richfield dealer puts in fresh, clean, rich lube all weather motor oil. The Pennsylvania premium grade oil that cleans as it lubricates. But that's not all. As a final precaution, the Richfield dealer makes a safety check of your battery, tires, spark plugs, and radiator. So tomorrow, stop where you see the Richfield Eagle and the cream and blue pumps. Protect your car with Richfield All Point Safety Service. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. And tonight has presented Sundown by Joel Murcott. Featured in the cast were Barton Yarbrough as Dan, Sam Edwards as Ben, Will Gear as Sam, Ted Osborne as Hunsaker, John Ramsey Hill as young Ben, and also heard were Paul Fries and John Daner. Special music arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week. You are trapped on a dwindling sandbar amid the rushing waters of a South American jungle river. Night is coming, and with it hordes of Amazonian vampire bats. The river surrounding you teems with ferocious piranha, the cannibal fish from whom there is no escape. Next week at this time, the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York invites you to escape to the jungles of South America with a seething tale of terror and violence as James Poe tells it in Bloodbath, starring Vincent Price. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week when once again we offer you Escape. Tom Hanlon speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>